Yeah, I've got... This is where I keep some of my art. Usually this is stuff I'm working on. And like papers and stuff, but... Well, that's another advantage to working digitally is I could zoom in really far on that guy. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard sometimes to want to upgrade and to like move on and get something else because you're really comfortable with what you've got. Lots of times I found that, you know, you, there's just no choice. You know, you get, there's a new software, there's a new computer. Yeah, I remember you know, my first Power Mac, one gig memory, and I was like, we would never use a gig. What are you talking about, a gig? You know, now I have files that are a gig. But finally I made the leap and this new one um, has been great because I've had these brushes that I've owned for a long time that I'm like, oh, that's how it's supposed to work. Like halftone brushes where they're pressure sensitive and tilt sensitive. Lots of times when, I, when I'm painting analog, I, I'm flicking paint and stuff and, and um, there's all these little happy accidents. And that was something that I felt like I was missing digitally. There's all this great stuff now with the tilt sensitivity to the pen where I can really kind of like angle my paint and stuff and it really feels like I'm I'm working on the board, you know, which has been really cool. So I thought with this new setup, you know, kind of feeling uh, adventurous and my buddy Gerard Way, uh, who I did Mother Panic with and stuff, we, we were going to do this new book for Dark Horse. Uh, Gerard makes this book called Umbrella Academy. It's now a show on Netflix and all this stuff. And we wanted to do a Christmas special. And I thought this would be the perfect project to play around with all these new brushes and stuff. We used to have to cut little pieces of film to use these half tones, you know, before. So see how uh, sensitive it is. It's great. No more cutting film. Now I can go, you know, uh, the harder I press, you know, the more intense it is. So pretty awesome. I would have loved this when I was wrestling with Zipitone back in college. So like this, this is a uh, watercolor brushes all in Photoshop. And then on top of that, then I've, you know, put in some snow. Here we've got John's lettering in the end here. First thing Gerard said to me when asking if I would want to do the book was, uh, do you feel like experimenting, you know, getting kind of trying some new stuff? And I'm like, uh, that's exactly what I want to do. So, which is hard to get a lot of clients to want you to do that. Um, so Dark Horse was like, yeah, great, whatever you guys want to do. Say, so I'm going to do this scene like uh, really noir feeling. And, and I'm going to use those those like zip-a-tone, like uh, half-tone effects in there. Dynamic brushes that mix color together. And I can tilt and it feels like I'm using a real colored pencil here. This book is my guinea pig. <laughs> This is different. But yeah, okay, this is awesome. Lots of comics are done with teams. Um, you have a penciler and an inker and a colorist and a letterer and then the writer. Sometimes that's all the same person, sometimes it's different people. I tend to handle all the art myself and my friend John Workman does all of the lettering. But he, he's the only letterer nowadays who uh, does it by hand. Um, everybody mostly uses fonts now. And there's something about doing it by hand that I just absolutely love. Um, that there's, you know, you can tell. There's a life to it. There's a, not every single vowel looks the same. You know, not every, you know, it's, there's a certain bounce to it and a personality to it. John has started to actually letter his work on a Wacom pad or on a Cintiq. And I can't tell the difference between what he did on a paper and scanned in and e emailed to me, or if he did it digitally, um, which is pretty cool. When I'm drawing 
I like to stand up a lot. My desks are really high up. I tend to, you know, move around a lot more that way and it's much easier on my back. So I've been trying to figure out how can I, you know, kind of work a little higher up digitally. But the new Cintiqs, now they have this arm uh, that I could raise up really high. What's cool is to have the options um, that I can sit, I can stand, I can, I can have it lower, I can have it higher, I can rotate it. Yeah, I noticed that when I'd be working with multiple monitors, if I had to, I could just have this one, just this Cintiq, the 32 inches is big enough that I don't even need my other monitor anymore. Old habits are still dying hard, so I still have it, and I've got my stuff over there, and I've got, you know, so I'm transitioning to this new, new workflow now that is the same, but opening up all these new possibilities. I'm able to have open lots of different programs, and you know I've got my layouts might be open in a, in a preview window over here on the other monitor uh, while I'm working on the finished piece over here and I've got my reference here and I've got you know so many things open at once which is really cool I can jump back and forth to. It's also nice having something that I can anticipate how it would look on screen. Working for stuff in print is a little different if I'm working on something that's going to be on TV or on the internet or something, uh, it's nice to have an HD monitor, which I didn't have on my old Cintiq. So it's nice to have something that, okay, I, I really get a sense of how this might look as far as the color, the contrast, the everything, and I can really think ahead that way. Doing more and more video kinds of things, uh, I think the Cintiq's going to come in really handy. I always get questions from people like at conventions or, or fan mail or something where they say, what kind of brush are you using? Or what kind of paint is that? Or what kind of Cintiq are you using? You know, what kind of programs, you know? And those are all good questions, but none of that stuff's really gonna do the job for you. So none of that stuff's gonna make you a good storyteller. None of that stuff's gonna make you uh, automatically know how to draw a farm or a, or a building or you know, medieval Japan or something, you know, so you got to do the work. There'll be a cover I just did or something where I sketched it out on the kitchen table on a post-it. So it's good to have anything, you know, you don't just restrict yourself to, well, I work traditional or I work digital or, I mean, there are, there are lots of artists who get really, uh, get really weird with that. Sometimes people can have a weird misconception of Maybe that's not like real drawing or painting and somehow the computer makes it easier or... And there are advantages like doing revisions, you know, sometimes... I just had to do a Star Wars cover really fast and I had a day and I usually do them as paintings, these big watercolor and gouache paintings and I didn't have the time but I had my Cintiq and these new brushes from Kyle and I was really excited to use them so I was able to do the cover in half the time and I'm really happy with the results. The artist's hand is still there even though it's digital.